you know, for most of the guys that come here, uh, it's about when you feel like it's time to start a new chapter in your career. So I felt like it was that time. Go, 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 let's go, let's go, let's go. Number one, we can, we can run on both sides of the ball. I mean, it's evident everywhere you look. Uh, on defense and on offense, we've got guys that can absolutely get after it. And when you have that, that's something that you just can't teach. Scott looking over the middle of the field, fires it towards the left side, caught by MC Sands, his defender falls down, inside the 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, EMCC. Price just throws it up on a fade pattern and it is caught, touchdown, EMCC, from 18 yards out, making the catch is going to be Dorian McLaurin. EMCC has now won 12 straight since losing to Jones in the season opener of 2016. The AMCC has settled that score. It's 47-34. Lions on top of the Bobcats in game one of the 2017 season. I want to say thank you. Thank you for continuing to fight. Y'all did a heck of a job in the second half. Hey, just buckling up the chin strap and going to work. Five on three, seven, four, six. One, two, three, five, four, five, six. Seven. Uh, it was a little bit surreal. You know, it's been a long time since I, since I played some live football. And, uh, you know, it's a blessing. You know, all glory to God. And uh, it was kind of a, a little culture shock at first. You know, it's been a while since I had li live bullets. I think the, the, first, the first drive, I took a helmet right to the chest. And, you know, it's been a while. <laughs> uh, it was good. I think, um, you know, having a little bit of adversity at the start helped him. Uh, he battled through it. Uh, kept playing and just really proud of him. You know, it's his first you know game that he's played in in a year, so uh, you know for him to battle through that adversity, I was really proud of him. The team got down by 14. What did you do to rally the troops on the sideline? Um, you know, I didn't have to do much. You know, I, there there were guys. I looked in the locker room. There were guys that had determination in their face. They knew what had to be done. They knew that we put in the work. So uh, all I had to do was just kind of get pushed in the right direction, and they did the rest. Just just building some momentum. I mean, it was, we came out a little rusty tonight, but I mean, this is the first game. And uh, we just got, I mean, we want to know right now and then 0-0 zero zero tomorrow, but I mean, we went, to the, we went to, the, uh, to the locker room, went back to the drawing board, and did what we had to do the second half. Just keep, you know, just keep hammering, keep, keep whittling, keep, you know, keep pecking away, you know, uh, because the, the thing was, you know, you know, you, you knew you were good enough. I mean, you look out there and you go, hey, you're better, you're a better football team than them. And you just didn't, you just weren't playing, you know, and you just, uh, they give them a lot of credit. They played, they played very, very well, and we're, you know, we're very fortunate to get out, out of here with a win, but uh, uh, we did. And uh, now let's move on to the next one. Let's, let's, uh, they say you, get, uh, you, you make more improvement week one to week two than you do any other time during the year. Uh, let's, go, let's go see if we can get that, uh, get that improvement made uh, tonight on film, working on film, and then tomorrow and, uh, and over the weekend. Let's, uh, let's see what we can get done. But uh, excited about next week now. And, uh, and, and now that all that stuff's passed and done, we're, we're good. How great is that receiving core for you? Oh my gosh, they're great. I've never seen a group of guys that are so willing to take a five-yard route and go to the house for you. So I mean, they want it much as bad as I do, and a hell of a hell of a receiver core. First thing is score. I mean, it's obviously the first first down first, but it's always score when I touch the ball. But I mean, I'm I'm thankful for Lindsey to put the ball on the right spot. So. How was it for you to transition from player to coach here tonight? Uh, I tell you, it's a lot tougher sitting in that box, not having you know direct control of everything. But um, you know, we got some great players here, and and we always will, and we're gonna recruit recruit the best talent in Mississippi, and uh, you could tell that tonight. It was great. You know, I haven't really scored. Good game, boy. Good game. <laughs> uh, I really I haven't really scored. You know, in college football, really. I mean, I scored at Oregon, but here, I mean, it was. It was it was lit. It was lit. it was live, and I, I loved it. Go over a little bit of what you said to Coach Stevens after the game was over. Well, uh, pretty emotional for me. I mean, uh, uh, you know, I played for Coach Sullivan, and I knew that someday somebody was going to break 
uh, become the win in this coach, and uh, I was real proud of Coach Stevens for getting there. He's worked hard. He deserved it. It was a, just a great game, and I, I think I was more nervous about this game than he was. I really wanted this one, and uh, and to win it the way we did coming back, I said, you know, we got a good football team, and uh, I think in the second half they showed that. I said, we – you know, we got some players that uh, really came back and played well the second half. I'm looking forward to the rest of the season. I'll be bad food if we don't have a good one. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, I just want him to know I was proud of him and want him to look at the jumbotron. He didn't know really what was going on. That's, a, that's you know, nobody's ever going to be as good as Coach Sullivan. Uh, I, I'm, I'm definitely not me. Uh, Coach Sullivan is, uh, he, he coached at a time when, uh, you know, coaching was really tough. I've got it a lot easier, you know, and, and you know, we've, uh, we, but it means a tremendous amount. It's a, it's a huge honor. And um, just to even have your name uh, mentioned with Coach Sullivan, and uh, I hope that uh, uh, it'll be something that, uh, I, hope it, I hope that, that record, uh, my record won't last real long. Hopefully somebody else will come along and, and break that too. With the hiring process of Coach Stevens, we, um, you know, the, our program, our football program in particular, was not doing very well. Uh, we had had come off of about four years in a row of, of really poor seasons. Uh, the board and, and our president both uh, made a commitment to try to improve our athletic programs, uh, not just football but all sports. Uh, part of that was we had already hired a new basketball coach. We were hiring a new football coach uh, in the process of who to look for and what type of person to look for. I was, wasn't was involved in the interview process. I came along a little bit later, but uh, I heard some stories. Uh, I don't know about the first interaction, but first story is when he interviewed and, and uh, I think he went through the entire interview with his sunglasses on his, on his head, so that was kind of an interesting thing. But um, I think he was appreciative of having somebody on campus that might uh, help promote you know, his football program, having come from uh, Pearl River, but in his first year as a head coach, I think he was, he was appreciative of having someone uh, with some experience to, to do what I might be able to help him publicize his program. Nothing really eventful that I can think of in terms of a first, oh my goodness, you know, look at this personality kind of guy. Pearl River Community College at that time had four seasons in a row that they had won state championship. Uh, one of the seasons they uh, they won the national championship and I think played for another national championship but lost. And uh, so we were looking at some of the, when we had some interest from some of the people from their staff, we were very interested because we knew that uh, Coach Stevens was the offense coordinator, I believe, at Pearl River, and we felt like that he knew, you know, what it would take to win at this level. He knew uh, what it would take to recruit and how to get the players in. Uh, obviously, because of their success, they'd had at Pearl River, and um, so we were, you know, that was one of the things that encouraged us to uh, to look into, you know, him becoming employed with us. So, uh, you know, that was. That was one of the things we were looking for, is someone who could bring success to our college and, and to our program. You know, I'd come from uh, Mississippi State, so it's a kind of a different level of football. Of course, we heard the stories. I, I heard the stories of Coach Sullivan, and so I was kind of enamored with the tradition and the uh, mystique and, and, and all that with the Sullivan era. Of course, we were still playing on that old field. Didn't really know what to expect, to be honest with you, because. Uh, I was in a different league with different, working with different people, uh, still the same type of job. But when we started winning, it was a pretty cool feeling, you know, uh, going eight and two that first year, even though we got knocked out of the playoffs early on. But that 2009 season when we won the state championship, that was really easy to get caught up in all the, in, 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 in all of that because I had to do some research in terms of last time we had a winning season, the last time we were in the playoffs, the last time we were ranked, all of that kind of came flooding. So it was a challenge in that respect, but it was a welcome challenge. Coach Stevens had a, you know, was able to bring in a great staff of assistant coaches who did a fantastic job of recruiting, had a lot of contacts at the Division I level and were able to bring in some top caliber players. 
uh, immediately, and it made a super impact. I think we went eight and two the first year, won state championship in 2009, which was a, which in my opinion was the, uh, the starting point of our program. You know, really, uh, whenever he, when that happened, that kind of got the ball rolling to get interest into the new stadium, and it just kind of kept going from there. I think Buddy would be the first to admit in 2008, 2009, even though he was coming off of um, you know, great years as an assistant coach at Pearl River, four straight state championships. I think he knew he, that's what he wanted to do here, but didn't really know what to expect. We were still playing at the old stadium. He still had to recruit players. Um, but no, I, I think once we got the one national championship or the one state championship, I think that became the norm other than how in the world did EMCC just win a state championship or first a division championship. How in the world did that happen to a state championship, to a national championship? Now it's how many can we win and every year, every game we go out there, we expect to win and expect to win championships. And that's, that's a true testament to what Coach Stevens and his, and his coaches and his players and our staff and administrators do to sustain that over 10 years. It's pretty amazing when you think about how difficult it is to win on any level but to sustain success is even more difficult. Buddy Stevens has now become the all-time winningest coach at East Mississippi Community College. Congratulations, Buddy. Having worked here for the amount of years I've worked, I've heard a lot of stories about Coach Sullivan and a lot of appreciation from the alumni who played for him and respect. And, uh, you know, I know that I never actually got to meet Coach Sullivan or play for him. I played under Coach Bradbury, but, uh, I've heard, like I said, I've heard many stories, and and uh, for Coach Stevens to be able to, um, you know, to be able to break that record, I think is a, a major accomplishment for him and also for our institution. You know, to be a part of that and uh, to uh, witness it and be, you know, be here during that time. I guess I could always tell my grandkids down the road I was there when Coach Sullivan's record got broke. You know, you probably heard countless stories about Coach Sullivan, the people who played for him. Uh, at different times, wasn't sure they were in the right place. But as time has passed over the years, this is an experience I wouldn't take anything for. I mean, I'm, I'm proud that I was one of the guys that, that actually got to play for him two years. And I played for him the last two years he was here. So it was a unique experience. He was, uh, he was mostly what you've heard. Uh, of course, you know, over the years, stories get exaggerated a little bit. And I used to tell people, I used to interview uh, Nick Clark and I at the same time because we played for him at two different times and I always told him if you want to hear good stories about Coach Sullivan you need to talk to Nick and if you want to hear the truth you come down to my office. So uh, the, a lot of them have been exaggerated but at the same time uh, uh, there are a lot of things about him that are very interesting. When you're playing in the stadiums named after Bull Sullivan and you hear the traditions and the lore and you continue the skull and crossbones and all of those things that still linger on after 50 years. I mean, it was the 50s and 60s then when Bull was here. And to know that we're kind of back at that level and maybe even a little more with winning championships, uh, it, it, was, it was a prideful thing to see that happen. I don't know how many people were really aware or fans know just how much success Bull had while he was here, even though maybe not in championships or trophies, but in the terms of lives that, that Bull changed. Uh, it's a little different now when you've got the glitz and the glamour and the trophies and the bling. It's a different maybe kind of winning, but still equally uh, amazing. Records, I've heard people say records are made to be broken. I knew that at some point in time, somebody would win more games than Coach Sullivan if they lasted long enough. Buddy has lasted these 10 years. He's been able to do it in 10 years. So I was proud for him. Um, and uh, I think it's very deserving because if you look at what he's done in 10 years here, he hasn't done it by himself. He's had some help with administration and that sort of thing. He's had some outstanding coaches. But uh, he is the reason that he's the win this coach. You think about you know, the 12 losses that that Buddy has had in nine plus years, five of those came in one season. And then you rebound from a five and five season in 2010 to opening a new stadium and winning the national championship in that first year. Uh, it's, it's truly amazing to be able to sustain for that amount of time with 
with in junior college with the transitioning going on between players, you lose good coaches from year to year, administration changes, um, all kinds of factors go into it, but to sustain that over a, a, a great amount of time uh, is, 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 is an amazing accomplishment in itself. Greatest week of practice, you know. It, it's been uh, uh, it's been up and down, um, but I think we, we finished up pretty good. Um, you know, we've got a lot of a lot of uh, Gulf Coast going to give us a lot of different looks. I'm sure they're going to bring a lot of pressure uh, offensively, defensively. You know, they got a guy that can really they can really run. At quarterback, they've got a lot of weapons uh, on offense, so it's going to be it's going to be a challenge on both sides of the ball. Uh, special teams, they always, they're always very, very well coached. They're a well coached football team, period. And uh, we'll, we'll have our hands full. There we go. Good. Don't jump. Don't be good. Don't jump. Don't jump. It's the first game I've missed since, uh, in about, since probably 1992, as, as, for, as far as me starting to play football and everything. It was real. I mean, it was just, it was emotional for me. Uh, you know, I watched it from my office alone. And, uh, and it, I, I, I'm glad the guys played hard. They understood that, that it wasn't. It didn't matter who was on the sideline. Go out and do your job, and and they did a great job last week. Uh, coaches had them. We had them prepared. But uh, uh, Coach uh, Sanders and Coach Williams and the graduate assistant, they did a hell of a job of, of keeping them together, and uh, we came out with a victory. Hard work on three. Down loud, guys. Hard work. Talk it out. Talk it out. Talk it out. Hey, hey. First and goal to go for EMCC. Jumbo package, they leave it on the ground. Price goes around right side, he goes into the end zone. Touchdown, EMCC. Tyrell Price with his second touchdown of the year. And EMCC on their opening drive, marches it down the field for the score. And it's six to nothing, pinning the PAT. Empty set, Gibson with the snap. Pocket collapses and he's gonna be hit and he falls forward. And now he's not gonna have enough to get back to the line of scrimmage. He's gonna lose the yard, so he's sacked. And EMCC comes up big on third down that time. 21 seconds on the play clock. Here's the snap from the seven yard line, throwing it over the middle, caught by Rogers. He's middle of the field at the 25, 30, and he's gonna bounce to the near side, 40, 45. Gets the sidelines, gonna step out of bounds at about the 41 of Mississippi Gulf Coast. Second and goal to go from the one. The snap, leaving it on the ground again, bowling his way around the right side. It's gonna be Price, and he's in for his second touchdown of the game. His third of the season from a yard out, and EMCC leads it 13 nothing with 3.48 to go in the first quarter. With trip receivers near side, which is the wide side of the field. They fake the bubble screen, and now looking to go down the field. He's gonna be hit, dropped, 25 yard line, sacked. Down goes Gibson. Coming up to make the huge sack is gonna be Boatwright. Calvin Keyes Jr. in motion from near side to far. Lindsey Scott back in the pocket, fires it deep down the field. Merritt has it caught inside the 35, down to the 32, middle of the field, first down and more. That's how you get that 10 yards back. Scott with the snap, gonna leave it with Mark, comes around near side, great blocking inside the five, and he's gonna go towards the goal line, and he steps inside the goal line just by the pylon near side, and it's a touchdown, EMCC from nine yards out. Green pass near side caught out across 20, 25. He's going to get the near sideline, and he is still on his feet. And that's Mike Williams inside the 40, inside the 30. It's a foot race. He's going to win it 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, EMCC. Their first touchdown through the air tonight. And EMCC extends the lead. 
High snap taken down by Gibson, back to pass. Inside pressure, and he's going to have to get rid of it quickly. Fires it downfield, intercepted. 48-yard line by EMCC. Coming near side, across the 30. He's at about the 25, taking off his feet at the 24-yard line. That's Ty Williams. Well, he just went up in the air and grabbed the football. It was a rifle shot down the field, but very nice hands that time by Williams. He just grabbed it and then kept his balance, races it all the way back inside the 30, and with 4.48 to go in the first half, the Lions already leading Gulf Coast 28 to three. Looking near side and firing it near side as the defender fell down, caught by EMCC inside the 10, and now dragging folks inside the five and down to the two yard line, and that's gonna be Travion Jones out of Woodville, Mississippi, six foot 185, a freshman. Now down to the two of Mississippi Gulf Coast. Going to leave it on the ground, busting it straight up the middle in for a touchdown. It's going to be Reginald Hunter Jr. The freshman from Pascagoula, Mississippi, will score his first touchdown as a Lion. And EMCC scores from two yards out, 35-3. EMCC going to lead here at the half. Takes a snap and it leaves it with Torrey and he's going to be slung down around the 20 yard line. Another tackle for loss and making the tackle for loss is going to be Eric Kitchen. Will turn, leave it with Torrey. No, fakes it and he's going to fire it. Intercepted. 29 yard line. Near side 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown. Quinn Jones. Wow. Well, the only guy that had a chance really to make that tackle after it was picked off was the quarterback and he was no match for the the Lion return man that time. That front seven has been phenomenal. Pressure backfield and he's sacked inside the 15 down to the 14 yard line. Connor in the shotgun, Price flanked to his left. Price goes around right side as a hole. He's pushing his blockers. Uh, now he's going to bounce to the outside. He's free. 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Tyrell Price is going to score again. Well, that was a big time run that time, Jason. He had to show a little speed, show a little toughness, and he just pushed his way off a guy, kept his balance, then outran some down the sidelines. Two seconds, one second. This game is over. And EMCC just comes up huge there defensively to get this game over with quickly. It's 49-10. Your final score is the coaches and team go out to midfield for the post-game handshake. Buddy Stevens, the all-time winningest coach here at EMCC, wins number 89, and it's now 35 and 1. EMCC right here on this playing surface at Sullivan Wyndham Field. Great job taking care of business. Great job. How, how good are you? How good are you? We could be really good, but I'm going to tell you something. Hey, we got picked on a little bit at corner, and we got to do better. We got picked on a little bit in a lot of different places on offense and defense, special teams on kickoffs. We, hey, are we perfect? Nope. Are we going to strive to get it right every single time? Okay? We got to get back to the drawing board tomorrow. We're going to get ready for the next ball game. You are now 1 0 after two weeks. We're going to work on it next week. You got me? Yes, sir. Hey, I promise you, I will not lie to you. I have told you this truth all the time. This is a really good football team if you get ready. All right? Sure. Really good. And now I go three. Yeah. Now I go six. One, two, three. Five, five, six, six. Six.